Man, when I see this, it reminds me of one thing and one thing only. Calling occupants of interplanetary, most extraordinary craft. Unfortunately, I can't sing more than 10 seconds or YouTube will demonetize this video. Wonder Hussy here. Remember that movie Contact with Jodie Foster where she was a scientist manning this huge radio telescope and she got a signal from an alien race? <laughs> well they filmed that movie here at what's called the Very Large Array down near Socorro, New Mexico. The aptly named Very Large Array, which is a name come up with by scientists if I ever heard one, is basically exactly that. It's an array of ginormous radio telescopes picking up radio waves from outer space. I know next to nothing about science, but I guess radio waves are on the electromagnetic spectrum, somewhere below infrared waves. And somehow they're able to turn the information received by these telescopes into images of galaxies and quasars and stuff that can't be photographed with a normal camera. This place is located way out in the middle of nowhere in south central New Mexico at a place called the Plains of San Agustin. Basically, it's just a really high desert plain. We're at 7,000 feet and it's sparsely populated. There's not really any cities in it, so there's no light pollution and there's more importantly, no radio frequency interference. Okay, I guess these telescopes get really scrambled by anything that emits radio frequency interference. Uh, so when you go, if you go on a tour in the, uh, VLA, you have to turn your phone onto airplane mode. In fact, you have to turn your phone off. I even had to turn my Fitbit off. They take it very seriously because I guess even the slightest amount of interference will screw up these very expensive uh, antennas. So that's part of the reason why they chose this valley. It's There's really no towns here, very, very few small towns. And this entire valley is just ringed by mountains, which helps to block out any interference coming from cities outside the area. Okay, so lucky me, they actually do public tours on the first Saturday of every month. And I randomly happened to be here on the first Saturday in June. So I was able to come down here and take a tour of the facility, which was friggin' amazing. Unfortunately, they don't let you shoot any uh, photos or video on the tour. So I can't include the awesome stuff that I saw, most of it anyways. Um, like we went into the control room where the guy sits who operates all these antennas. And he was like, he was this total like cyberpunk anarchist looking dude with a astrophysics degree and a mohawk. Man, it was so frigging interesting to get a peek inside the control center of this place. The tour is cool because they'll answer all your questions and try to explain in layman's terms what exactly it is that they're doing out here. And you get to walk up and get up close and personal with one of the uh, antennas, which I guess, despite the fact that they move them around constantly, there's always an antenna at this spot right here so that you can uh, check it out as close as possible. Wow, I mean, just the engineering that goes into this thing, it's crazy. Reminds me of 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> we went from throwing bones at each other to building this stuff. They're all laid out on railroad tracks because they can actually be moved around, believe it or not, depending on the configuration they want to put them in. So it's this giant Y shape railroad track. There's three legs. Each leg is 13 miles long. There's a leg going that way for 13 miles. There's a leg going that way for 13 miles. I'm not sure you can even see them in the distance. And then behind me there is another leg that goes north for 
Well, actually that one doesn't go 13 miles. That one only goes 11 miles because apparently around mile 11, they ran into a ravine and they considered building a bridge over it, but it just seemed too complicated and expensive. So they just decided to leave that leg at 11 miles. Okay, and another thing that's super cool on the tour and probably the coolest thing is you can drive over to the friggin' hangar where they service these things. This is where they do all the maintenance. So I guess there's 28 of these things and they only use 27 of them at any given time. One of them is always in the hangar for maintenance, getting cleaned up and, you know, because bird poop and stuff probably accumulates in the dish and, you know, little service touches, whatever it needs, upgrades, and then they kind of just rotate them around. To move them, they use this giant freaking transporter device that unfortunately I wasn't able to get very close to. That's the only downside to this tour. All the interesting places had authorized personnel only signs. And unfortunately, I'm totally unauthorized. So basically they move these antennas or antennae around into different configurations uh, depending on what they're trying to do. I guess they have four different configurations, A, B, C, and D. A is the biggest configuration where they're the farthest spaced out at the very end of these rail lines. Um, each rail line has little spurs at intervals where these antennas can be placed. And then there's like a connector for these fiber optic cables that um, transmit all the data they're collecting back to the command center there. Anyway, depending on what kind of configuration they want them to be in, A being the biggest, all the way down to D, which is where they're all clustered in real close, they move these friggin' things along these rail tracks very slowly, two, three miles an hour, not too fast, because, hello, it's a wind hazard. In fact, that's why, I don't know if you can see that little whirly gig on the side there, that's a wind measuring device, because if it's too windy, these things get shut down. I mean, it's basically a big sail, right? He said that the guy who gave us the tour said there's never been an accident while well, they've been transporting them though. Anyways, yeah, they take it down this real spur basically. Each one of these stations is these three concrete piers. You can see there's some empty stations there in the distance too. Well, depending on the configuration, <laughs> they take it off of these piers, they move it back down the spur to the main rail line, and then they move it down the line to the next spur or the next spur or however far out they need it, depending on which configuration they're doing. This is high speed rail. They had to go buy miles and miles of high speed rail for this uh, because not the thing only goes like two, three miles an hour when it's transporting these giant antennas. But because it's so heavy, I can't remember how many tons the antenna plus the transporter weighs. It has to be this super expensive, hardcore rail. Man, hopefully this is making sense to you guys. I find this so fascinating and it's really frustrating. Like I'm trying to speak another language that I'm not fluent in because phew, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Anyways, that transporter moves the antenna along the railroad tracks to whatever position they needed to be in. Now there's one slight hiccup on the north arm and that is US 60, Highway US 60 runs right smack through the northern arm. So check this out. <laughs> When they have to move an antenna this way, they actually have to shut the highway down for a few minutes to get the antenna across. I think it takes, oh, they go like two to three miles an hour. So it only takes a few minutes. It's not like a huge inconvenience, but holy wow, man, I would friggin' love it. This is, that's one instance where I would not mind being stopped for a roadblock. If I got stopped here and had to wait for this giant antenna to cross the friggin' highway. That is one traffic jam I would not be complaining about. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not sure you can tell, but all the antenna dishes are facing the same direction. All 27 of them, because the guy back in the command center controls them. And when he hits the button, they all move very slowly, pretty much imperceptible to the naked eye, unless you're real up close. But they all move in unison, like some kind of cosmic ballet. <laughs> but check this out. Behind me here, look at this one. Uh oh! Like the guy who gave us the tour said this one was malfunctioning, so it's stuck in an upright position. If it stays like that for more than four hours, I think it better go see a doctor. So what'll probably end up happening is they're gonna have to haul this one back with that orange uh, transporter thingy, take it back to the uh, hangar there in the distance, and 
do some repair work. It's interesting too, the guy said that they basically lease most of this land from the BLM, I think it's all BLM land. But apparently when they first built this thing back in the 70s, there was a bunch of ranchers in the area that were using this BLM land to graze their cattle and they weren't too happy about a bunch of scientists coming in. And I guess they were concerned that the lights from the antennas were gonna freak out their cows. Well, in the 40 odd years since they put these in, the farmers have seen that. No, it's not an issue at all. So apparently there's just cows roaming around pooping willy nilly all over the place here, which is a really interesting mixture of old and new. I love stuff like this. Like here's these badass modern antennas and then there's these ranchers and cows and railroad tracks and all these 1800s relics thrown in with them. It's an interesting mishmash. Also, it was super interesting inside that command center because they have this crazy huge computer that I guess crunches all the numbers that these telescopes are picking up but because it's a computer and it emits uh, radio frequency, RFI, I think that stands for radio frequency interference. Anyways, it's behind these crazy huge metal walls. It's like sealed off. I mean, that place is a trip. First of all, it was built in 1976 and it's never been remodeled. So it had this really cool like 70s military industrial vibe which reminded me a lot of uh, my childhood actually because I grew up on an army base in Germany that was probably built around the same time and had never been remodeled <laughs> it's really interesting but yeah man this place is just a trip I can't recommend coming here enough if you're interested in stuff or science in particular really cool and only six dollars six dollars is all they charge you can come walk around here by yourself or you can come on the first or the third saturday of the month and they do tours um, either one is totally worth it this is a trip anytime you start thinking that people are idiots and are ruining everything well that is kind of true in a way but they're also doing a lot of really cool stuff and i don't know i kind of hope they do make contact with somebody at some point Although that whole movie contact is kind of BS because they're not actually monitoring for <laughs> extraterrestrials here. You know, SETI, S-E-T-I, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Well, they have their own array of telescopes up, I think, in Northern California. Big surprise, land of the woo-woos, up on Mount Shasta. And it was financed by Paul Allen, the Microsoft guy. So I think it's called like the Allen Array. And that's SETI's private array that they're using to scan the skies looking for signs of... Well, extraterrestrial life. I'd love to go check that place out, but I don't know if it's open to the public like this one is. This one here, they're just picking up information and making pretty pictures of galaxies and quasars and stuff like that. So it's all like very serious science stuff here. None of that alien nonsense goes down here at the VLA. But don't let that dissuade you from visiting this place. Even if you don't happen to be here on the first or third Saturday of the month when they do the public tours, you're free to come in here anytime you want and just look around on your own. And it's a really interesting, totally surreal place to take a walk. I highly recommend it. Even for someone like me who knows nothing about science, it was fascinating.